Good morning and welcome to my studio. I'm Russell Smith and today I'd like to share with you the creation of another underpainting for a piece that I'm currently working on. This one's entitled A Prayer for the Bounty and it's actually another rework of an idea that didn't quite fulfill my vision the first time around. The idea was inspired by a song written by Ray Sisk and performed by Warren Haynes entitled Glory Road. It's about a bounty hunter who's been hired to bring in an outlaw. He's successful in shooting down the man, but he's filled with regret when he finds that this wanted man is nothing more than a teenager. As the lyrics state, he was only a kid, maybe 17, but he traded love away for a streak of mean. Now he's tied to my saddle with his head hung low out on the glory road. I'd play the song for you, but unfortunately I don't have the licensing rights, but if you're watching this on YouTube, just do a search for Warren Haynes and Glory Road and you'll come up with plenty of results. Now I created the original version of this painting back in 2017. I had a general idea of what I wanted to do with the subject and I was really eager to strike while the iron was hot, so to speak, and get started on the painting. Unfortunately though, I made the mistake of doing so without a fully fleshed out vision of what the full composition should look like. As a result of my lack of preparation, I ended up having to fight with the painting the whole time I was working on it. I reworked the background, I recropped the image, I changed the subject's head position. But to my disappointment, the final image never really fulfilled the vision that I had in my head. It was a good reminder to me though that no matter how excited and eager I am to start a painting, I always have to take my time and prepare, think it through completely, and know exactly what I want before starting. Well, not surprisingly, the painting hasn't sold. But that's not a bad thing, because as far as I'm concerned, if a painting hasn't sold, then I have free reign to work this idea until I'm fully satisfied with it. And that's exactly what I've decided to do. So a few weeks ago, I sat down and created a pencil study for a new version of the painting. I reorganized the composition based on some things that I felt like I had done wrong in the first version. The very first thing I did was give the subjects more space so they didn't feel so crammed into the composition. I then took the badlands behind the subject and moved them far into the background to give the scene more depth. I changed the position of the rifle in the man's hand to a more relaxed, convincing position. And finally, I added a second horse to counterbalance the subjects. After all, the outlaw would have had a horse too. Well, now I am satisfied that this is the direction I want to go. So let's get started on the painting. Regardless of whether I'm painting an airplane or a Western scene, I always try to start with the sky. The reason for that is because the sky sets the tone for the painting. It determines the light, the color, and the general mood. In this scene, the sun will be low on the horizon, back over the viewer's right shoulder, so I want to try to capture the warmth of the late afternoon sun. With the sky painted in, now I'm going to move on to the subject's face. This is the focal point of the painting, and much of the story here is going to be told in his face. Fortunately, my model, Gary, is one of the best out there, and he was really able to capture the emotion here that I wanted to convey. Next, it's time for the horse. I've gotten to where I really enjoy painting horses. There are many more colors in a horse than what you initially see, and after taking a number of Western art workshops, I've really learned how to look for those secondary colors and nuances and how to apply them when you're painting a horse. Now we're on day two of painting, and the first thing I decided to do is remove the breast collar from the horse that I had painted the day before. 
Breast collars in one form or another have been around since people have been riding, and they're standard items still used today. In the Old West, however, it was common practice at the time to remove the breast collars, so in order to give this a more authentic feel, I decided to take it out. You can't tell from this angle, but after working on the horse for a little while, I began to suspect that I might be painting it a little too warm, especially in the shadow areas. For that reason, I decided it would be smart for me to stop working on the subjects and go ahead with painting in the landscape. Like the sky, the landscape will dictate what I do with the subjects. Why is that? Well, in order to convey a sense of realism, a subject has to feel as if it actually exists in the space that it's painted in. The colors of the surrounding landscape will influence the colors of the subject in the form of reflected light, thus making them feel as if they're truly part of that space. In order to get the loose feel on the background, I use a combination of palette knife and a small round brush, both of which I can load up with paint and push and pull in any direction that I want. I've slowed things down here for a minute so that you can get an idea of how I use the knife. As you can see, I'm both pushing the knife into the canvas as well as scraping it across. And each time I pick up more paint from the palette, I try to load it up with multiple colors so that when I lay them down on the canvas, I get some nice random variations in the overall color. I'll use that same technique if I switch to a brush. I'm working in a fairly small space right here, but when I move on to larger areas, the technique doesn't change, only the strokes get larger. As I work the background, I'm not trying to get too detailed here. My main goal is simply to establish the main value and color masses and try to capture the feel of the sage and prairie grass. I forgot the horse's tail. Work hack. There's way too much oil in that unbleached titanium. So how do you get that out? Like this. Put it on a paper towel. Let it sit for a couple of minutes. A few seconds at least. And then put it back on your palette. That way, the paper towel soaks up a bunch of that oil and you have much more usable paint. What am I using that unbleached titanium for? Well, I'm gonna make that horse in the background white. I decided on a white horse back there because a darker mass in that area would have competed with the subject and it would have made the overall composition feel too balanced and uninteresting. A light horse against a light background doesn't compete for your attention as much, yet it still provides a counterbalance to the subject. Unfortunately, I don't have a good reference for a white horse in this lighting angle, so I'm gonna to have to make up the colors as I go. Believe it or not, there's a lot of color variation in a white horse.
Lastly, I need to paint in the dead outlaw tied over the saddle. Now to be honest, the question has lingered in my mind as to whether anyone will even consider buying a painting with a dead body depicted in it. But I can't leave it out since it's a central part of the story and I really don't want that factor to sway me from painting this scene since this is a story I want to tell. After all, why else would I paint it twice? The best approach here is just to keep the corpse low key and keep the focus on the bounty hunter. Well, that's it for now. The underpainting's finished and I'm happy with the direction it's going. I'll set this aside for a couple of weeks and go on and work on other projects. And then maybe in two or three weeks, I'll come back to it with a fresh set of eyes, see if I need to make any changes or adjustments to it, and I'll finish the painting out. In the meantime, thank you for watching.